So in this video, we're taking a look at page three, and we have already discussed solving the 3x plus 5 equals 20 equation. And so we've got this up top. If you need to pause and take any notes there, feel free to do so. But now what I want you to do is take notes with me here on the equation where we're solving 4x minus 1 uh, equals 11.8. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose to add one on both sides. And we want to add one on both sides to keep it balanced, and that's the addition property of equality. Now I want to point out that we pick a plus 1 because we have a negative 1, and we want to be able to have that cancel out to be a 0. That's the inverse property of addition that says we can just cancel that out. That's the inverse. But what property says that I don't have to write the plus 0 in my work because 4x plus 0 is just 4x? That's the identity of addition. So we pick the 1 because of the inverse, and we don't have to write the 0 right here because of the identity. What property says that if we're going to divide by 4 on this side, we have to divide by 4 on both sides to keep it balanced? That's the division property of equality. And again, we pick a 4 because we want this number to divide by itself for this to be a 1. And that's why we pick the 4. Now, what property says that we don't have to write that 1? We can just slash it out. That's the identity property of multiplication. So friendly reminder that POE stands for property of equality and that you can put a plus sign or a times sign to show of addition or of multiplication. So if you want to pause the video and now try the next one on the back, feel free, or you can just keep the video playing and I'm just going to walk you through the next example. So for this one, what we have up top is a 3 fourths x and it's subtracting 2 to equal 7. And then once again, in step 1, we're going to cancel out the constant here by choosing a plus 2 because of the additive inverse property of addition, additive inverse, all right? Now, if we're going to add 2 to one side, we have to add 2 to both sides. That's the addition property of equality. And this step right here in our work, we don't have to write it. We can just go straight to step 2. So what property says we don't have to write that 0 when going from step 1 to step 2? That's going to be the identity of addition or additive identity. Now what we're looking at is this part of the equation. We have the 3 fourths x equals 9, and that's up here in your work. That'd be the 3 fourths x equals 9 that's left over. And so in case you want to see that just all by itself, we're now, once we added the 2, we're left with a 3 fourths x equals 9. Now I want to remind you guys that the goal of the coefficient is for it to be a 1, and that is why we're going to multiply both sides by this 4 thirds. We're going to use the inverse property of multiplication to get the coefficient to become a 1. So why do we multiply both sides by the reciprocal here? So that the coefficient will equal 1. And what property says that if we multiply by a 4 thirds over here, we have to multiply by 4 thirds over here? That's going to be the multiplication property of equality. Now when we multiply, we get the 4 thirds times the 3 fourths is a 1x. Again, we pick the 4 thirds because of the inverse property of multiplication, multiplicative inverse. And then what property says that from step 3 to step 4 here that we don't have to write the 1 because 1 times x is just x. That's the identity property of multiplication. So from the top, we have a 3 fourths x minus 2 equals 7. And because of the uh, inverse property of addition, additive inverse, we can just cancel that out. And the identity property says I can just write 3 fourths x. I don't have to put the plus 0. Now the multiplicative inverse property is why I'm going to go with the 4 thirds so that this will become a 1. And then I have to multiply on both sides because of the property of equality. And then right here in the last step, I don't have to write the 1 because of the identity property of multiplication. All right. Now for this last one, once again, I mean, if you want to pause the video at this point and just try the last set on your own, feel free. Or you can just take a look as I walk through this. So if we have 1 half x plus 3 equals negative 5, our very first step is going to be to subtract 3 on both sides. And what property says that we have to subtract 3 from both sides to keep it balanced? That's the subtraction property of equality. Now, what's not a question here is the part where it's the inverse. The reason we pick a negative 3 is because we want to be able to just go, that cancels out. So it's not a question over here, but we do have the inverse property of addition. I had it up here. The inverse was asked there, but it was not asked down here. Um, now the next step says that we don't have to write the plus 0 because half x plus 0 is just the half x, so I get to write just the half x in my work. That's the identity of addition or additive identity. 
Now, what property says that we're going to multiply on both sides to keep it balanced? That's the multiplication property of equality. And why did we pick the 2 over 1? What property says that 2 over 1 times 1 half x is just going to be 1x, the inverse of multiplication? So we use the inverse right here for this to be a 1. And on the last step, 1x is just x. I don't have to write the 1 there because of the identity property of multiplication. All right, let's flip over now. And we're just going to walk through just some other places where the properties are shortcuts. So when asked to solve the following equation, 12 plus 3x equals negative 6, Andre decided to rewrite the problem like this. And a lot of times it's because you guys are used to seeing the constant here so that you can just subtract it from both sides. It does so throw some people for a loop when the constant comes first. So we want to know what property says that Andres can rewrite it because a 12 plus a 3x is the same thing as a 3x plus 12. The order shouldn't matter. And so this one is going to be commutative of addition. Okay? Commutative of addition. All right. When combining like terms, here we have a 5y minus 8y plus 3 plus 8y. Thomas immediately got the answer of 5y plus 3. What property did Thomas identify that allowed him to simplify so quickly? So what Thomas probably noticed here is that the negative 8y and the 8y are going to cancel out, and that's how he got the 5y plus 3 so quickly left over. So what property says that a negative 8y plus 8y are just going to cancel out to be 0? That's the inverse of addition. Inverse of addition. Now, if you were thinking identity, because now I don't have to write the plus zero. I see what you're saying, but we want to go with the inverse because we just want to cancel that out, and we're left with the 5y plus 3. Opposites always cancel out to be zero, and that's the inverse of addition. All right, so now what we've got is we're applying properties to solve the equation 2x plus 5 equals 21. And first, we want to know which two properties are used here in step one when solving the equation below. So one property is going to cancel out the constant, the other one's going to keep it balanced. So be careful here. Notice that we're saying a 5 minus 5 is going to be a 0. So we're saying a 5 minus a 5 is 0. That's the inverse of addition. That's the inverse of addition. And then what property says we need to subtract 5 on both sides to keep it balanced? That's going to be a property of equality. Okay, so for this one, we have two properties. We have the inverse of addition. That says to subtract 5 so it cancels out. And because we subtracted on both sides, we have the subtraction property of equality. Those are our two answers. Now, which property said, though, from step 1 to step 2, that you don't actually have to write the plus 0? You can just write the 2x. This is the identity of addition. And what properties then says for the last step that you don't have to put the 1 with the x, that you can just put the x, that's going to be the identity of multiplication. Okay? So that concludes the video here on pages 3, 4, and 5. And now you're going to attempt pages 6 and 7 on your own for practice. Thank you.